Let's talk about balls. Where do you go if you got a lot of clothes and you want to stand up while looking at all of them in the room? Chris, if a walk-in closet. So obviously we failed with the like baiting, guys, and that's okay. Either you guys don't like the like baiting, you didn't like the video, or you just really did not want me to do my Christopher Walken impression, which is fair. Which, which is fair. It is bad. So, today's Top 5 Friday, as suggested by you, is... Rival Blasters. That's what this is. This is the original seven round magazine for the rival Apollo, and Rival Blasters was a weird Top 5 Friday. I thought to myself, self? Why do they want top five rival blasters? There are only six rival blasters. But you guys are the boss, so we'll do it anyway. Here you go, one thing will be left out, but five will make the cut. Top five rival blasters, go! So, the thing that makes the Rival Blaster special is that it shoots differing types of ammunition. These are high impact rounds, everybody just calls them Rival Balls, but they are a slightly different kind of ammunition. They fly a little bit less far, but very fast at first, and they are remarkably accurate and relatively predictable. They also let you load different styles of magazines and are highly space efficient in terms of how they work and function. They're also not orientation reliable, so you can do things like put them in hoppers and shove them in tubes. So, our number five is of course the Nerf Rival Apollo. This was the initial Rival Springer. It's got a magazine release built into the handle, which is ultra ergonomic and sweet, and it loads very intuitively, almost real steel style through the handle. It's got a monster safety built into it and a huge trigger, but it's very comfortable for even the most adult sized or chunky of hands. Now, of course, this rival Apollo has the Hades configuration. It's a modification that I did, attaching these pieces from my good friend Avery of Custom 3D Nerf, and it allows you to fire this like a shotgun. Even without these, it would be our number five. I just didn't want to take all of it off. And let's be honest, the thing that we're leaving off the list is terrible. Turns out, shooting two shots every time from a 12-round magazine that loads in an incredibly awkward fashion is shifts not ideal, but this is pretty sweet. I was very pleased with the Apollo when it came out. It was cost efficient, high performance, rival blasting. It actually performs better than its uh, flywheel counterpart and it is really cool. It's the only one that loads this way. It's a unique feature. It's highly desirable both for regular performance and for modifications and that is why it's our number five. It's also super affordable right now. It's crazy on sale because all of the new hotness is flooding the shelves. Our number four blaster is also an oldie but a goodie using similar style magazines. These are the full length 12 round magazines. They slide in just like this. Now this one of course has extended magazine release from my friend Avery as well as these stops on the side that make it so that while it's no longer ambi and it's reloading, it is far more efficient because you can just slam them home. Now, this is my modified one. If you guys remember from the way, way back machine, I did modify this to be full auto. Now, the full auto in the Zeus functions much more like a burp fire than an actual burst fire or full auto because it really uses the spring in the magazine as the pusher mechanism for the balls. But with lipo power, even in semi-auto, this was a house. It was the coolest way to fling rival rounds when this first came out. and. With these modifications, it's one of the highest rate of fire blasters of all time, the issue being that you only have 12 rounds of capacity. But, three bursts, five, five, and two is definitely nothing to joke about. Now you are immediately going to have to reload this guy up, but the Zeus is super affordable right now as well, again, because it's been out for so long and so outclassed by its older brothers that this is pretty cheap. Uh, a lot of people have used them to make hurricanes or other sort of blower mechanisms for high, high capacity rival blasters because ultimately the guts that make these function are all the same. All flywheel rival blasters work more or less the same way on the front end. The big difference between all of them is how the balls get to the flywheels. You're either using a magazine, a hopper, or these tubes, and that's the only thing that you're paying for. So, if you plan on modifying it in such a way that that doesn't make a difference, or you just plan on using the massive flywheels for other modifications, the Zeus is cheap, and it'll donate those things in the smallest package out of all of the flywheel blasters in the rival line. 
So even though a lot of people think that this is dated beyond its utility, I still like the Zeus. I think that it's pretty cool and it definitely has a place in our community, in our hobby, at least. So that is our number four blaster. Let's move right on to number three. Our number three blaster is, of course, the Rival Artemis, and this thing is sweet, guys. I know that Springers aren't as exciting as some of these flywheel counterparts, but it's just tough to beat something like this. So while it does not load in the funky fresh through the handle styling, it has some awesome features. First off, you don't have to fool with the funky Rival magazines, which realistically only work in three blasters right now. You get built-in 30 round capacity. It's actually quite easy to load both on the go and like just in general and it's pretty modular so it was not difficult for EOC to 3D print a stock and a foregrip change even without those things it's a very compact blaster but with them it becomes ultra ultra sweet the Artemis rotates through four of its barrels each one stores a ball except for the bottom which is where it fires through it has slam fire which makes it a very effective spray and pray primary humans versus zombies players are already in love with this Granted, they don't have the Nemesis yet, but there's nothing quite as good as it in its category right now because the Apollo loads in a funky way and the Atlas is just terrible. So the Artemis really is the only Springer that's a standalone primary with no modifications and it's really, really good out of the box. With modifications, it's ultra sweet, but everybody who's played with this seems to really, really dig it. It's easy to reload. You don't have to fool with magazines, just a dump patch full of, of high impact rounds and you are ready to go. It accommodates both the red dot sight and nothing else realistically, but it does have a little bit of rail attachment love and it's just very, very compact and cool. It's a lot of the things that I like about the Elite Alpha Trooper, but in rival form. Now, it does not have the way to do a rapid reload, so that's kind of funky and I don't like that. And it's still pretty expensive, floating at about 45 United States dollars and way more overseas. So, the Artemis is only our number three, which means that yes, our top two are going to be flywheel blasters. And yes, they're gonna be in the order that you think they will. Number two on our list is, of course, the Chaos. The Chaos is sweet, no doubt about it. The Chaos is quite the rival blaster. It brought us full auto out of the box and high capacity magazines. Even though the magazines are huge, they do hold 40 rounds at a time, which is no joke. There was a lot of talk about how these would break humans versus zombies, except carrying a lot of the magazines at once is incredibly difficult. So, they weren't a super huge impediment on the battlefield, yet, they are potent and effective because when properly modified, their rate of fire is significant. It goes up with the 3S and it's about stock plus a little with the 2S. They're capable of using both the rechargeable battery pack to save on cash and both of the accessories. I particularly like the red dot sight and I don't necessarily like the flashlight grip. I prefer my Peep Fuzzy Peep custom grip. That said, the Chaos is awesome. The Chaos does a lot of great stuff and right now you can buy a full Chaos for around 55 United States dollars in the States, which is redundant and awesome all at the same time. It's a powerhouse flagship primary at a very reasonable price and it's rival, which means that it's hitting those high velocities and that reasonable accuracy all under the control of full auto, which means that if you don't hit it the first time, you can just keep squeezing until your opponent goes down. That's sweet. So the number one problem with the Chaos is that it only comes with one magazine and despite Hasbro promising me that by late March there would be Chaos Magazine reload and refill kits on the shelves, those have yet to arrive. So for a lot of people that is a huge detracting point that you can't easily reload this quickly because you can only get the one magazine out of the box. That said, if you plan your sales properly and are willing to buy other Chaoses to mod, that is not nearly the issue that it could possibly be. So these are pretty easy to come by if you have an active nerfing community. And if you don't have an active nerfing community, then why do you need more than one magazine? Why can't I hold all these magazines? I know, I know guys, we've done a lot of stuff with the Nemesis recently, but 
This one is red, and that means it's on the correct team. So, our Team Red Nemesis is the number one rival blaster on the list so far at this point in time. Undoubtedly, there will be yet another flywheel and springer pair, and who knows, maybe they will dethrone the Nemesis. But the Nemesis allows us to rapidly reload, has a monster capacity, and... <laughs> Pretty decent performance, both stock and then when modified becomes a veritable ball hose. Hose of balls, bally hose goodness. We're dancing with fire here. I don't know if we can make any sort of metaphor or joke about the, the balls. Mm. Okay, so uh, the Nemesis is sweet. It's major downside because the upside is apparent. It's a tank of a blaster, it does great things, it's easy to modify, and it has monster capacity that can be easily expanded and reloaded quickly, and ironically does allow you to do complete and full rapid reloads as well. The major downside to the Nemesis is of course the price tag. That's right, a solid Benjamin, 100 United States dollars to bring this behemoth home is no joke at all. That is a ton of money, especially when you consider that it's realistically cheaper to make this than it is uh, a Chaos. All you have to do, if you're Hasbro to make this, is turn the Chaos upside down and not sell a clip with it and instead fill the shell with something that holds balls. So like, it is larger than a Chaos, there's a little bit more plastic involved, but it's fundamentally the same entire loading mechanism and flywheel system moved horizontally instead of vertically. It's a little bit less compact and it holds a lot more ammo, but it's a Chaos. It's a Chaos that feeds from the top down instead of the bottom up. The fire rate is a little bit less consistent, so there's definitely an argument to be made for the Chaos being the superior tactical blaster to the Nemesis, but the Nemesis is boss. We all know that. It's been obvious in various Nerf War footages that I've taken, both POV and from the drone, that this thing is capable of single-handedly sweeping a team of seasoned Nerf Warriors just because you can pull down the trigger and spray for eight seconds. It's insane. So, the Nemesis is our number one blaster. I am very curious if you guys would have ordered your list differently. And now, it's time to like bait. Like baiting level over 9,000. So, you guys didn't like the Christopher Walken. I understand that, I appreciate that. If you can, get this video to 10,000 likes. If you can smash that like button so hard it's got a bruise by the end of this week, then I will do the entire next Nerf Top 5 with a mohawk. I said it. I feel like I have to do it now. I will in fact do the next one with a mohawk and just like previous top fives where I've made this deal, I will not mention it. I will just have the mohawk the entire video and only you, my most loyal of viewers in the comment section below will know why I have such a ridiculous hairstyle for that following top five. So let me know in the comment section below A what you think the next top five should be because I love your suggestions, keep them coming, but also uh, make sure you smash that like button so that we can do something equally ridiculous and far less Christopher Walkenified. Much love, Nerf on, Drac out. Gave you too much, now I'm swallowed. Now I'm the fool while you're breaking rules.